Okay, so anyone who knows me or has maybe spent even one conversation with me will probably know that I have a dog. My dog's name's Andy, and he is a pit bull staffy cross, and he is my baby. I love him so much. So one thing you'll know about Andy is that he is very, very spoiled. He gets treats multiple times a day. Sometimes because he does tricks or because we're training him or sometimes we leave the house and we just give him a little going away gift. Um, but mostly just because he's really cute. Andy loves good food so much that he refuses to eat his dog pellets without gravy or something nice to cover them. But the thing is, a few weeks ago, Andy came down with an ear infection and we took him to the vet. Long story short, the vet eventually told us that she thinks his ear infection is due to food allergies because this was the second ear infection he had had in the last month. And so what we had to do is put him on a strict diet of only this medical hyperallergenic dog food for at least three months. And there was strictly no treats or any sort of other food allowed. And oh boy, I just knew it wasn't gonna go that well. So last month, we started Andy on only dog pellets. And he was so confused. For the first week, he's still doing it. He walks around trying to get food out the bin, trying to pick up treats on his walk or see if there's any things on the floor he could eat. If he sees anyone holding food, he jumps on them and frantically tries to get whatever they're holding. And he just can't understand why suddenly we're withholding food from him. So he seems to think now that he needs to stock up his food or he's gonna run out or there's gonna be some sort of lack. He even tries to cover his dog food bowl and bury his pellets. And watching him do this just broke my heart. I wished I could have told him that the situation was temporary and was ultimately for his healing. I was doing this for his good. You see, if we didn't give Andy the special diet, the vet said that he would possibly have to have a major surgery or eventually go deaf. So why am I telling you about my dog? <laughs> in this time, God spoke to me about living in a season where there's longing, where we hoped for something, where we can't exactly see our blessing, where, we don't, where there doesn't seem to be enough, where we hope for treats, but all we're getting is boring old pellets. James 1 verse 16 to 18 in the Passion Translation says, so my friends, don't be fooled by your own desires. Every gift God give God freely gives us is good and perfect. Streaming down from the Father of lights, who shines from the heavens with no hidden shadow or darkness and is never subject to change. God was delighted to give us birth by the truth of his infallible word so that we would fulfill his chosen destiny for us and become the favored ones out of all creation. And so, in whatever season you find yourself in at the moment, church, I'd like to challenge you to look further than the pellets in front of you and to look to the eyes of your provider. Going back to James 1, verse 16 to 18, we notice four things about who our Father is. Firstly, God is only ever good, even when we don't see it. The truth is, God would not be God if he failed even one of his promises. He never has and he never will. God is completely sovereign, infinite in wisdom, and perfect in love. You see, I loved Andy enough to spoil him, but I also loved him enough to give him exactly what he needed in this season. Andy saw pellets and lack of provision. He was longing for something, but something different, something better. But what he didn't see was the special medical food held greater value than, and significance than any, any of the treats ever could. I think sometimes as young people, we feel so much pressure to be at a certain point in our lives, in our finances or in our homes and our families, our cars, our educations, that we lose sight of, who, of our Father's heart. We lose perspective on what, goodness, what the goodness of our Father should look like in this season and ascribe earthly value onto things. We don't recognize how our current situation doesn't imply a lack of provision or a fault on the provider. God is only even good, ever good, even when we can't see it from our perspective. And he is good enough to only give us what we need in this season. The second point, God never changes. You see, whether I was feeding Andy dry dog pellets or giving him gravy and treats, my heart towards it remained the same. Hebrews 13 verse eight says it like this. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today, and yes, forever. This means that the same God who loved you enough to die on the cross for your sins, who gave us 
who sought aside our worst and gave his only son for us and paid the ultimate price to come into relationship with us. The God who provided for you and blessed you in your past, this is the same God providing for you in this season and he will never change and his heart behind his provision won't either. Thirdly, God paid the highest price for your healing. One thing about Andy's special medical food is that it's the top of the range, extra expensive food. <laughs> Definitely more than we budgeted for. But paying the significant cost, came, I came with this realization that I would probably pay more than what most people would consider rational to see him healthy and healed. Church, Jesus already paid the ultimate price for your healing. He overcame death so that we could live freely, healed and whole. God is all about our healing, even when it, at times it means sacrificing our comfort. And fourthly, God isn't finished with you yet. You see, the season of pellets is temporary. We were created by God for an eternal destiny, and through his Holy Spirit, we have access to heaven on earth, even in the hard times. Romans 8 verse 28 says it like this. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. To end this off, I'd like to remind you that if you look closely, you'll find that the season of pellets is not void of God's goodness. In fact, in, it is in this season where, if you remember the unchanging heart of your father and lean into what you're worth to him, you will find greater hope in knowing that even when you don't see it, he is still working.